Okay, so hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about what does it mean if we see oil and or smoke coming out of the dipstick hole. I will also talk about what can cause it. We'll also talk about the PCB valve and runaway diesel. Now I will consider this as part two of the first video I made entitled blow by what is normal and what is not. So in case you haven't seen this one first, I strongly suggest that you watch this one first or even if you have I still suggest that you watch it again to refresh your memory the reason why I wanted to make this video is that I've recently seen a video on YouTube that guy has a D4D engine with oil as well as smoke coming out of the dipstick hole and he is claiming that it is perfectly normal and I will show you what is normal okay on this D4D engine as well as on this 456 engine we will take a look at the dipstick hole when the engine is still cold as opposed to the engine when it's already hot. To some extent, when you, when you just first started the engine, it would be normal to see a very minute, okay, very minute amount of oil coming out of the dipstick hole. And when the engine has already reached operating temperature, you should hardly see any oil, let alone smoke coming out of there. So first let's do this on this D4D engine. This engine is cold, I'll show you. Temperature of the cylinder head is 29 degrees Celsius, okay? Okay, so I just started the engine. Just so I can show you, it's still cold. 29 degrees Celsius, okay? So let's take a look at the dipstick hole. And completely remove the dipstick. And there's no oil. Okay, so oil or let alone Now let's wait for this engine to come up with operating temperature. Okay, so I do believe we've already reached operating temperature. Let's take the temperature of the cylinder head. It's about 66, 67 degrees Celsius, okay? And let's take a look at the dipstick hole. And do we see any oil or let alone smoke? We do not. Now we'll do the same on this 456 engine. We'll take the temperature of the cylinder head. That's where the sensor is located. So 31 degrees Celsius. Okay, this is cold. Okay, so just, say, just so I can show you, but even touch the 31 degrees Celsius. Okay, so still, still cold engine, 31 degrees Celsius. Now let's take a look at the dipstick hole. Okay, so I'll take a look at, remove the dipstick hole, I mean the dipstick. Okay, and just so I can show you. Do you see any oil out of there? We don't. Okay. So now let's wait for this engine to hit its operating temperature. Okay, so now I do believe this engine is already hot enough. Temperature of the cylinder head is 61 degrees Celsius. Okay, so let's take a look at the dipstick hole. We don't see any oil, let alone smoke coming out of there. Okay, I will even wrap this engine up for you. that is what normal looks like now these are the possible reasons for oil to be pushed out of the dipstick hole one is too much oil clogged pcb valve poor oil circulation and i will be frank with you 80 to 90 percent of the time it is by reason of excessive blow by so like i've said please watch that one first link of which is in the description below now let's start with the simplest first too much oil Check your oil level in the dipstick and the best way to do this is to just let your engine sit there for just a few hours and then check your dipstick. And you should not see oil level that is below here that indicates that you have very low oil and in the same manner you should not see oil that is beyond this point or especially way that above that indicates that you have too much oil. Now another possible reason is a clogged PCV valve. Now this is only applicable with gas engines, okay? Now PCB stands for Positive Crankcase Ventilation. Like I've said in my video entitled Blow By What Is Normal and What Is Not, all engine has blow by. Hence, all engine has a crankcase vent 
order to release all that blow by pressure that would otherwise be built up inside your crankcase. Now blow by pressure is composed of hot air and unburned fuel. That is why blow by fumes is recirculated back again inside the cylinder to give it a second chance at ignition. What makes a gas engine crankcase vent different from a diesel engine is that in a diesel engine there is no need for fuel to air ratio. As you can see the intake is just an open air intake. Air is just gonna be sucked inside the cylinder. The more air the better. And if you want more power you just simply introduce more diesel via this diesel injectors. As opposed to a gas engine, there must always be a balance between fuel and air. That is why a gas engine has a throttle valve to regulate the amount of air that gets sucked inside the engine and balance that with the amount of gas you introduce. Now, because blow-by gases is a mixture of hot air, unburnt fuel and other combustion byproducts, if you will just reintroduce that inside a gas engine, that will ruin the fuel to air ratio of the gas engine and it will impede its performance. Hence the need for a PCV valve on a gas engine. On a diesel engine you only have a closed crankcase vent, meaning you only have this one vent that is connected to the intake to reintroduce all that blow by pressure or blow by gases inside the cylinder. So in a gas engine you have a PCB, meaning blow by gases is not only going to be sucked from the engine and reintroduce it again inside the cylinder but as well as fresh air is going to be introduced inside the crankcase. And the purpose of this valve is to regulate the amount of blow-by gases that will be reintroduced inside the intake depending upon the RPM of the engine so that it will not ruin the fuel to air ratio of the engine. Now at times your PCV valve gets stuck or clogged and if that happens that can cause blow-by pressure to build up inside the crankcase and push oil out of the dipstick hole. So if you have a gas engine you might want to check your PCV valve. Now technicalities aside whether you want to call it PCV, CCV, crankcase vent or simply just a vent even on this 45.6 manual they just simply refer to this as a breather hose. But they all serve one purpose and that is to release blow by pressure. Now number three possible reason is poor oil circulation. Poor oil circulation can also cause excessive blow-by problems. This is also the reason why I said in the beginning it is somewhat normal to see a very minute amount of oil being pushed out of here when the engine has just started. Because the oil inside your engine has not properly circulated yet. Now aside from the lubricating purpose of the oil inside your engine, the oil also helps seal the gap between the cylinder wall and the piston. And in most cases, this gap between the piston and the cylinder wall should only be between 0.02 mm to 0.04 mm. And that gap is very thin, even thinner than the average human hair. And so that very narrow gap should be filled up by a thin film or thin layer of oil and that should help seal the cylinder better. That is why in most engines you're going to find oil sprinklers or oil sprouts shooting up oil towards the piston as well as the cylinder. In a 45.6 engine you'll find that oil sprouts here, okay? Spraying oil up the piston as well as the cylinder. That is why when checking the compression of the engine you should do so by performing a dry and wet compression test. I'll post a link of that in the description below. In any event, if you have a problem with your oil circulation, you'll have to bring the engine down. And last but not least, the most common possible culprit for seeing oil being pushed out of this dipstick hole, especially more so smoke, is by reason of excessive blow-by. Now it is not normal, okay? It is not normal to see oil coming out of here. And especially so if you already see smoke coming out of here. That is an indication that your engine is already badly worn out, that it's already allowing exhaust fumes or smoke to blow by and get inside your crankcase. 
exhaust fumes or smoke that you should only see coming out of your tailpipe not out of this dipstick hole you see people who are in the business of buying and selling engines aside from performing a compression test the very first place that they look at is the dipstick hole whenever they see a lot of oil and especially more so smoke coming out of there they move away and won't bother to buy it now there are those who say and claim that they don't feel any reduction in power or any underperformance of the engine leading them to believe that there is nothing wrong and that it is perfectly normal now depending upon your engine and how many cylinders it has you may only have one or two cylinders that are badly worn out and you would hardly feel any difference to cite an example this is a comment from one of my viewers and then he said on one of my old v8s the oil dip stick used to fly out when you rev it due to excessive blow by and then he proceeded on by saying it ran remarkably smoothly for a seven cylinder v8 i stripped it down and found the rings on one piston broken you see he only had one cylinder that is bad and you would hardly feel any difference when it comes to power but the blow by is already too great that it can already push and blow the deep stick out now what can cause excessive blow by one is like i've said poor oil circulation and two and the more common culprit is a worn out engine brought about by worn out tolerances between the cylinder wall the piston and the piston rings improper timing or lack of tune-up is not going to cause excessive blow by i've been there i've done that no matter how well you tune your engine up if your engine is already badly worn out you're going to have excessive blow by and the only remedy for that is no other than an engine rebuild in my experience oil additives that claims it will stop your engine from smoke belching does not work okay I have a video of that too and I will post a link of that in the description below. Finally, what will happen to your engine if you're not going to take care of that excessive blow-by problem? One, if your engine is going to be less efficient, it will consume more fuel, it will burn and consume engine oil and blow black smoke out of your tailpipe. And that is not good for the environment and also that is not nice to other people. Number two, because of excessive blow-by, oil inside your engine will be contaminated by hot air, unburned fuel, and other combustion byproducts. Your oil is going to lose its lubricating quality, and at times it will form a thick sludge. And it will clog up the oil galleries inside your engine. And when your oil is no longer able to lubricate your engine, it will wear out much sooner, and at times even to the point of disrepair. I have a video as to how you can check your oil pressure, link of that will be in the description below. Now number three, the possibility of runaway diesel. I think most of you have seen videos like this, and that is what we call as runaway diesel. And just like what it's called, that can only happen with diesel engines. That is why it's called runaway diesel. For the following reasons, because a diesel is a compression ignition engine. As air is compressed, it becomes hot. That is why air compressors, especially on the cylinder head, becomes very hot. As opposed to a gas engine, wherein you need spark plugs to ignite the fuel. And number two, unlike gas engines that requires a throttle valve to regulate the amount of air and balance it with the amount of fuel, in a diesel engine, there is no need for a throttle valve because you only need an open air intake. And the more air, the better. So on a gas engine, when you turn off the ignition switch, the throttle valve also closes. On a diesel engine, there is no such thing. Now, Generally, oil is not flammable, or perhaps the right term is that it's not highly flammable. But under the right conditions, because of the extreme heat, it can be ignited. A runaway diesel can happen when the engine starts to consume and ignite its own engine oil as a fuel source. And when that happens, your engine is going to rev up uncontrollably. 
and turning off the ignition switch will not help because the fuel that is being ignited is no longer diesel but already engine oil and like I've said a diesel engine does not have a throttle valve so for as long as there is oil to be ignited and the air is getting inside the engine is going to continue to run away until it runs out of oil or in a more common scenarios until the engine destroys itself and the only way to stop a runaway diesel is you have to suffocate it by either you have to cover the intake or douse the intake with CO2 fire extinguisher otherwise for so long as there is oil to burn and air is coming in it's gonna continue to run away until it destroys itself now there are those who believe that it can only happen with diesel engines that has a turbo charger your turbo can start to leak oil that hot oil is introduced inside your cylinders then gets ignited then your engine starts to run away but even before even before the advent of turbochargers becoming a common thing on diesel engines runaway diesel has and can already occur by reason of worn out gaps that causes excessive blow by that excessive blow by is made up of hot air unburned fuel and other combustion vapors that can cause your oil to heat up and gets inside your cylinder and gets ignited and you end up with runaway diesel now one, now one can only imagine if you have a diesel runaway situation in a crowded area and your transmission is engaged now if you have a manual tranny you can just sim simply step on the clutch and disengage your transmission but if you have an automatic transmission and the gear is engaged your engine starts to run away then your vehicle starts to run away with it that is why it is important not to ignore an excessive blow-by issue although runaway diesel happens ever so rarely but the possibility is there now as vehicle owners as drivers, it is our duty to make sure that our vehicle is in good working roadworthy condition. Not only for our own safety, but for the safety of others as well. So anyway, I do believe that's it. I hope I covered everything there is to know about this topic. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, share, subscribe if you want to. Only if you want to. And as always, thank you for watching.